gentlemen boys and girls children of all ages non-binary this is the bear at night podcast and uh i'm here with a i'm here with a very special guest uh we all know the story of three typical average kids inside a haunted mansion you know they found a ghost and they became beetleborgs and i have one of those beetleborgs himself the green beetleborg the who was the it was a, what was the, it was a, a, a stag beetle? I can't believe it was a. Green, it, green in the first season, silver in the yes, second. Yes, yes, silver in the second. Herbie Baez, man, Herbie Baez Jr., correction. Thank you so much for, for <laughs> hopping on here. Uh, thank you, thank you. Very gracious. Um, I've been one of the, you know, connect with you with a for a while now and uh especially after like talking to some other uh rangers and whatnot too it's like where the beetleborgs at man what are, what are beetleborgs at you know um and just you know i love that i see you guys uh, you know out here thriving and, and you know living y'all best life and everything especially you you got like a really cool situation right now you know you're dealing with you do cars like what is that that you do exactly like custom work? Uh, I, I run an automotive concierge. It's called HADD Customs, which stands for, uh, HADD stands for Herbie's Auto Detail and Design. And, um, you know, it's funny because when I was on the show, <clears throat> automotive repairs, uh, money made from automotive repairs is what got me to work every day. And that was mm-hmm. uh, through my parents' company, which was Herbie, uh, sorry, Herb and Deb's Auto Service. Or wow. Herb and Deb. Yeah, Herb and Deb's Auto Service. And, um, as, as husband and wife, yeah, that's that's how they took care of us, man. So it it allowed us the opportunity to do some extra things, and one of those was was getting into acting. And uh, anyway, I just loved what they did. I fell in love with that. So I was like, you know what? I think that's what I want to do. I want to get in the car business and be a business, you know, an entrepreneur. So that's so dope, man. And I like seeing, you know, people doing non typical things, and you know, actually, you know, putting themselves out there, you know, and. Right. And taking a chance and that's the, the most important thing like if you don't take that chance you never know what can happen and um yeah well i feel like as a person of color and in these days <clears throat> i mean i can't believe i'm 40 now but you know <laughs> don't look looking like at these, i thank you very much i appreciate that <laughs> uh and likewise yourself you don't you don't look your age as we were discussing it, yeah right exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but i feel like you know we as uh at, at the ages that we are right now it's good to um, to be a face, especially in these times with, you know, what's yeah. going on in the world, racism, there's a whole BLM thing, which I, I didn't really partake in. And, um, some people may say, well, why not? Mm-hmm. My, my whole thing is, you know, why not be this face doing something positive, focusing on myself, focusing on, um, you know, being the best, uh, citizen that I can be. Yeah. And the more of us that do that, for instance, the youngsters see that, you know, not all of us can become presidents. Not all of us can become actors, um, you know, Very successful, true. successful actors. We can become actors, but maybe not successful, not as in whatever you, you know, consider success. Me, I consider it being on TV, having toys made of me, so yeah. on and so forth. But, um, you know, we can definitely tap into owning businesses and especially here in America. So it's nice because it allows us the opportunity to uh, to be a face for those who are younger. And instead of all the complaining, which, you know, yeah. um, a lot of our backgrounds, we don't have that figure where you do see someone portraying what we need to be, which is, you know, something more positive. Instead, it's, hey, next time this happens, run. Or the next time this happens, this, that, the other, all you're hearing is complaining. It's, it's a little bit difficult yeah. when you're a kid. That's all you know. Um, fortunately for me, you know, my parents were business owners and I have that background and I kind of want to share that and spread that. And that's mm. what, that's what my path is right now. Otherwise I've had so many opportunities, man. I've got, I've got clients who own some pretty big, um, uh, uh production companies. Um, wow. some are DreamWorks Animation, for instance, uh, Media Rights Capital, you know, they own the House of Cards franchise, Fast and Furious, oh. um, 
and some other uh, some other you know shows and things like that that they've been involved in. But like just so many different executives that have started these companies, like founders, right? Yeah, and I've got those opportunities, um, but it's again, it's something that I've tapped into. I'm very grateful for it, but I think it's best where I'm at right now, which is mm. um, running a successful company and being a positive role model, hopefully for. You know, yeah. kids and of all colors and and you know shapes, sizes, he's, they's, them's, all that. You know, I it doesn't matter to me, but just you know, that's true. And, and, and the thing is, you never know who's watching. That's the thing. You right. never know yeah. who's watching. You know, yeah. it, it don't take much. And you know, you get somebody to say, "Hey, I saw this. I saw you doing this car one day, and maybe you got interested." You know, not even knowing that you did anything on TV, and just, yeah, um, yeah, it was this is cool that you did this, and it made me more, you know interested in that and the right. fact that you did that is like oh you were on tv too that you know and, it, and it, it definitely happens and that's exactly how it's been happening these days i mean we're talking about what 28 years ago is when i first got on the show and i forget about it sometimes you know so sometimes I even think, between you and i trying to link up i'm like oh yeah wait yeah i was on a show shoot let me do this yeah. interview really quick because if i don't then this guy's gonna kick my butt because i keep missing it. <laughs> but you know what? But you were also a kid at the time too. It wasn't yeah. like you're like at like a teenage, like your older teenage years where it was like there. It's like you're growing up as you're doing this show. So it was like right along, like like I can say yeah, I did school, but I also was a little whaler for the mm -hmm. the uh, Harper Whalers. You know that was a part. That's that was a part of my life. But I sometimes forget. Yeah, mm -hmm. I play hockey. You know, like it was a part of it. You know, but just like mm -hmm. you did, it was like. I could I could equivalent you being on a TV show, like an after school program that you did for a really long time for a while, mm -hmm. looking a nice chunk of your life, um, right. but you still grew up. You still had time to grow up afterwards yeah. too. So I, I look at it like that. So yeah, I can, of course you would you know have those moments. You know, and right. so somebody reminds you like myself. Hey, <laughs> I remember you when I was a kid. <laughs> no, it's crazy. Yeah, especially when I shave. Like right now, I'm not shaved, but yeah. when I shave. Um, I still get recognized, man, which is crazy. You, you know, you know. Oh, <laughs> shout out to Roxy, uh, Roxy Hayes, because I sent you the link. I see the the clip last mm -hmm. night. Uh, I thought it was hilarious because I just had oh my god, she cracked me up. Yeah, shout Yo. out to her. She she yeah, she cracks me up. I'd never seen her before, but then um, you, you thanks for sharing that, man. It was, yeah, it, you, I thought it was like it was like fate. I was like, ah, this is it right here. This is it. I got to show. <laughs> uh, you definitely been, got a big laugh out of me. <laughs> yeah, because she's been she's been online right now because she says she didn't like Turbo, um, okay. anything before anything other than MMPR, and mm -hmm. you know, like she said, the what she didn't like about Turbo was the little kid, but she but she liked, bruh, Beetleborgs because of the kids, right. and um and that was also a draw for a lot of people too, and and I felt the same way. I was like, you know what? That's why I really love Beetleborgs myself because. These are kids that had these middle these beetle bounders, you know. Mm -hmm. And my little thing, uh, when I bought this off of eBay, it only came with one character in the little wow, thing. You still have the little guy. That's cool. Yeah, I only had yeah, one. A lot of a lot of kids would buy that bonder, and the the little whether it been the green, the red, or the blue uh, yeah. beetle would be gone. Like that. Yeah, I, I think I, I even had one why. lost it. <laughs> I guess see why. Um, <laughs> being on the show, like seeing how art imitates life in a way because your family owned a business in real life and on, the, and on the on the flip side in the show which you usually don't see a lot which i loved about your character is mm -hmm. that your family owned a comic book shop right yeah they had their own business and what you didn't get to see most most of the time matter of fact it was a black owned comic book shop mm -hmm. you know in a small little neighborhood and it was dope and, dope, and the grandma was super dope as hell too uh <laughs> and um, I love her. I love that actress. She was really good. Um, but rest in peace, really Vivian. Yeah, she was. She was wonderful. She was on a. Yeah. She was very successful. Um, she was on some movies and so on and so forth. Yes. I don't know much about her. I, I grew, as I got older and watched other things. I'm like, that's the grandma from Beetleborgs. You know, like. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it really like it was like a thing for me watching Beetleborgs. Was like, okay, so I want to work at a, a comic book shop, mm -hmm. and I want and also work at a at a, at a, at a, a record store. I love uh, it. I love it. <laughs> that was my thing. That was my thing because of your character. I was like, oh, oh that's man. cool, man. Oh, I want to work, but I never got a chance to. So it's okay. like the closest thing was like I got to work at GameStop for like a day. Right on. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. Uh, but I love that your character had it. You know, had a family that 
was working and that the dad was uh matter of fact the father was was there you mm -hmm. know you, yeah. you know people like to not show that you know and right. um he had and your character had a stable environment which i mm -hmm. love you know and it wasn't like the typical thing you know right. which was something different from like you know we just talked about watcher jones for a half second you know mm -hmm. i love zach as, as the black ranger and mm -hmm. he was my favorite, you know, childhood hero. But we never mm -hmm. really got to see his family side either. Right, right. So with you, we got to see you as a as a hero, as a mm -hmm. kid, and also with a stable environment. You know, it's like, damn, I want one of those. I mean, right. the, all those. You definitely look at it from a different perspective. I mean, I've thought about it briefly, but yeah, just kind of diving a little bit deeper into it. Yeah, it's actually really cool. Yeah, you know, especially as a kid, some kids don't have that. You know, and. Right. and those are things that people would like like to uh, strive for because they saw something like that on TV, you know, or like, you know, or be, oh, dang, that's a good father, son, you know, bonding situation to have there. Right. So, and it kind of adds to what they want to do with their kids later on, too. Right. No, absolutely. So, it all. Especially it yeah, the all parents comes, watching it with the kids, yeah. Yeah, man. Uh, I got kids. I got friends now. I got a friend of mine now. Um, shout out to Kenny Roberts. Uh, who is like getting his his uh, kids? His son is on uh, Power Rangers now, and I told mm. him, "Hey, don't forget Beetleborgs. You know, like, <laughs> don't forget Beetleborgs. You got to get Beetleborgs in there. Make sure. Yeah. You know, absolutely. Um, man, and so how how did it feel? That, what was the process like to get in that role? What was that like? Like, what was the process? One more time. I'm sorry. What, what was the process like as a kid getting that role? Like, how did that? All oh come boy. Out? Um, you know, it's so funny. I came across some link, actually. I think it was shortly after I watched the uh, the Roxy Hayes uh, video. Um, there was, like, a kid that was originally chosen for Drew's character. And I think they had another kid chosen for my character. Right. Uh, the audition process was pretty crazy. I went to six callbacks. I kept messing up my lines, which anybody who's ever worked with me on that show remembers. I messed up a lot of lines. I went through 50 takes on the little, on the little plant. Um the little plant episode 50 takes i think it was in a school the school setting or it was yeah. in no it was a haunted house there was one line i couldn't get because it was such a <laughs> tongue -tong twister they went through like a thousand feet of film because back then it wasn't digital yeah that's right and we had a little celebration after i finally got that line done but nobody on the, on the set gave up gave up on me anyways back to the audition so yeah i messed i messed up the the very last everything else i did all the auditions i did before were perfect the last one, uh, I kept screwing up my lines, and I advertised. Or I, um, I uh, auditioned for um, Shooky Levy. He was one of the executive producers, and his wife was there. And I'll never forget this. <laughs> I messed up the lines, yeah. and then um, on my way walking out, I was like, "Hey, you know, I'm sorry, you guys, for messing up the lines." On my way walking out, I, I swear to you, I cannot make this up. The wife whispers over to him, "Hey, why don't you give him a shot?" Swear to God, I was still down and out. I was still sad. What I remember uh, next is going down a long path of stairs, walking out to my mom and bawling. I was crying because I was like, "Mom, I messed up the lines." I almost like, right. It was, it, was, it was emotional because we went through so many different, you know, um, uh, uh, callbacks. And so, yeah, about a week later, I get a call, uh, or my mom comes in and says, "Guess what?" She's like, "You got, <laughs> you got, you got to roll on this B fighters," which they didn't call it Beetleborgs. They, they, right. they, they didn't want to name what it was actually called. But she's like, but but I you also got the role to play uh, uh, younger Marvin Gaye to be in a movie. Here's the thing, though, you have to choose. You have to choose which one you want, which one you want to do. Well, we both look at each other and we're like, well, TV series, more exposure or movie. Hmm. Mm. And so, yeah, I chose I chose the Beetleborg. Uh, we went the Beetleborg route. And of course, you know, there was a pilot that had to be shot. Right. And. We didn't know if it was going to run or not anyway, but I made the right choice because later on I learned that the Marvin Gaye uh, movie never was never made. Mm. So, so you did the right thing. Yeah, my audition, real quick, audition, my audition for Marvin Gaye, this is how I got that role. <laughs> so, you know, back in our day, I don't know, did you get spankings as a kid? How was you say? Did you get spankings as a kid? Yes, I did. Okay, yes. I got spankings as a kid, okay? <laughs> and my audition... <laughs> <laughs> my audition was the spanking portion so oh. i guess i guess i guess marvin gay got his butt spanked a lot right so yeah I, I was able to do that audition really well nailed it i think I only i only did one or two auditions and got that got that role uh but i do remember that i was like oh this is easy i got this oh you mean a spank oh 
Ha! You know, like the whole, no, <laughs> don't spank me now, <laughs> please. You know, that's that whole thing. <laughs> well, so anyway, I got both those roles at the same time. And at least it could have, it, it would have been worse. You could have got the, uh, the, Jackson, the, the, the Jackson 5 movie, you know, where, you know, they got beat us a lot, you know, in that movie. But, <laughs> um, now, my great, my great grandmother, my mom used to say my great grandmother would, would make her go out and, and choose her weapon of the choice. Switch. The switch, oh. and then and then I got the belt, and then I also got this little paint, this little this little paint stick. We'd have to hold out our hand and just be a little, yeah. a little quick snap, you know, and then leave little holes on my little little circles on my hand. These days, though, the kids, man, you know, you don't you don't really need to do that, though, you know. It's no, like there's ways with all the great technology and things like that, and these PS fives and all that stuff we have mm -hmm. now. You just take that away. You know, a little bit. Of, I can't tell you enough. Probably the best discipline I ever had was being incarcerated. And it was because I would get a, a speeding ticket. I wouldn't go to court right. on it. And I had to learn the hard way. They'd pull me uh. over. Sorry, son, we got to take you in. We got to bust you to court. Right. <laughs> and and it was like being in between those four walls. That's what a lot of people don't realize. Like there's people that will never end up in jail. But yeah. it is actually re rehabilitative because it makes you sit between four walls, yeah. slow everything down. You have no distractions. That's what we have. We have a lot of distractions. That's and true. so you take those distractions away these days from the kids and then they have time to think about first feeling sorry for themselves because they don't have mm -hmm. that toy. Then it's darn, how did this happen in the first place? Okay, let me make sure I don't do this again because this sucks, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's not really necessary, but I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I was, I'm grateful for it. I wouldn't change anything in my life, man. No, you, you live and you learn, you know, but it's like you go through situations and it's like really what you take from it. And right. it, it, you can, you know, it help, it use it as fuel to help you grow and be a better person, you yeah, know. Absolutely. So that's that's how I look at things. Like, yeah, I did look the, you know, the switch thing, you know, here and there the belt. <laughs> but like, my grandmother was like, you know what? I'm gonna screw with him psychologically. I'm gonna take him with the TV. There's no TV for a week. You right. can't go outside. You just yeah, can't go that was the worst. Oh my gosh! Like the only thing I could do was read a book. That was right, it. Right, and that's. Yep, that's that's what incarceration is like. You're, you're yeah. building up that knowledge, time to think about what you did wrong. And that's the thing. See, what it boils down to is the same thing as anything. Like if you get an F on a test, or like uh, in my in my world, right, like, right. If I if we mess up a panel on a car or something, we have to right. redo it. You know, it's a failure. And I always tell people, celebrate your failures because mm. the failure is where the lesson starts. And when you, want you fail, you learn how to avoid that failure in the future. Some of us have to learn more than others, right? But uh, <laughs> it's, true. It, it's true. yeah, it's a positive thing. Failures are positive. That's how I that's how I look at failures. I always and also I used to positive. love, I used to just watch other people get in trouble too. So I'm like, oh, that's what happened to you. I'm good. I'm not right, good. right, right. You know? Well, that was my brother. See, that's what history is all about, right? You watch, you watch the, the mistakes that some of these people made, and then you make sure you don't make those same mistakes. My brother was right there in the forefront. He'd see me get spanked for something. He never, mm. he might he might do the same thing, but he would never get caught because he knew how not to, not to get caught. Oh, you got caught? How hurt me? Okay, got it. All right, so I need to be behind the wall before I decide to do this or that or the other. It's something about your siblings <laughs> and getting beatings. You like you get that whooping. But it's something about that dynamic with whoopings and like and your siblings, like they watch and then, or somehow they want to blame it on you or whatever they do. Or right, right. Oh man, it's something there about it. It's just I but, tried. I tried blaming stuff on my little brother. It never worked. It hurts in the beginning when you're there, you're mad and everything. But as you get older, you laugh so hard about it because right. You know, you it was you were kids and you're being stupid and dumb and you know, but you're kids. You know, that's what it's all about. Um, speaking of that. Uh, what is it like being a kid and seeing that you had an action figure? Like, like I'm not gonna lie, man. I got a, I got a lot of pride. I got a lot of pride for that one. Although they messed up my they messed up my lineup. I had a I had a I had yeah. A, oh, I got it right yeah. here. There was like this missing part of hair. I don't know if that one has it. Does it have it on there? Nah, nah. No, wait, the oh. green the green one did. The green right, one had. So, and um, I, I was like, man, that huh? It has a little. They didn't put a part. Yeah, a little. They put a, a, like a little part there. A little part. Right there, yeah, up. yeah. Oh, yep, yep, yep. <laughs> it's, it's still there, bro. It's still yeah. there. <laughs> but yeah. um, I was like, man, they—they're really trying to make it look like me, you know. I mean, uh, but, but yeah. Long story short, yeah, it was—it 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 was, uh, was pretty exciting. Um, you know, it was funny too because, like, when I when I used to go to the toy store or Target, yeah. I go run for that toy section. I used to run for Power Rangers toys. Next thing you know, we're filming right next door to them. I don't know if you know this, but we filmed. Right. When we started filming, Zio was around. We took over the VR Troopers building. Zeo was around, they were our neighbors, and then Turbo started. 
and that's where we met Blake, the kid. He was actually really cool. Played basketball, yeah. a bunch of stuff. But yeah, running, running to those toys. Uh, you know, then then all of a sudden it's like for my birthday, I'm getting I'm getting given toys, but they're toys of me. Oh, yeah. That's pretty. That's a pretty crazy, you know, story. A, you know, pretty crazy feeling. Like really, I was, I was just as excited. You know, you know, I I did. I, as I got older, I watched VR Troopers and I watched Beetleborgs. Mm. And I don't know what it was. I don't know whether it's the suit actors that, you know, because they use B fighters material on certain things and then they go back to like the live action. But it was something about the movement in those suits that were way better than the guys using it <clears throat> in the VR Trooper stuff. I don't know if it's the same actors that know they use the same, I mean, same stunt, you know, stunt guys. A lot of these, yeah, stunt team were the Power same Rangers, like, Power Rangers Beetleborgs, and VR Troopers. But, but they worked better so much in that. In the, in the VR, no, in the Beetleborg suits, in the VR Trooper suits. They just... So, I mean, I all of the shows, I don't know if you understand this, but all of the shows have fight footage that were purchased from shows that yeah. were in Japan. From, yeah, from Toy. And before I got on the show, same thing. It was like, why does the screen go dark? Why is the fighting way more intense all of a sudden? Mm -hmm. And I was like, those were the times we lived for. We were just like, sweet. Well, I, I learned exactly what that was. And it was like, yeah. you know, our, some of the stuntmen that were on our show were stuntmen that were back then in, there in Japan, but the filming style was different. And um, so it was a little bit more cheesy out mm -hmm. here. Plus we had two different costumes. So when it came to the fight scenes, whenever our, our you know our stuntmen were fighting, right. they had on a foam suit. And uh -huh. then whenever they were just standing there and, and we were creating, doing lines, those were suits that were made out of carbon fiber. Oh. The suits were back then about $100,000 per suit. I remember the pricing on them because I was like, when the show was over, I was like, can I get one of those suits? And they're like, oh, it's got to stay in the Hall of Fame or whatever. And then they ended up using yeah. it on Power Rangers and made us the bad guys. I'm like, oh, man. Yeah. But, yeah. um, yeah. So, anyways, with the, with the whole the whole fighting sequences and stuff like that, I'm wondering if you were comparing Japanese footage of the R Troopers to maybe a fight scene in Beetleborgs that was American footage. Or no, but I'm, I'm, I'm comparing the American footage with VR Troopers and American uh, Beetleborgs. Oh. Oh, okay. Because got it. It's just like the the movement in the suits I noticed was a lot smoother, you know, walking oh, okay. around like or between the movement and like walking around like like the, doing the lines and just the fight scenes. We took uh, a swag class. That's what happened. We took a swag class before we got in the suits. Yeah, because man, it was just like it, they just <laughs> looked so cumbersome in the VR trooper stuff. Like you know, mm. when I see the what was there, the 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 girl ranger. I mean, the girl beat uh. VR trooper, I can't think of thing. Caitlin. Um, mm -hmm. It was just like it was just like she had boxes on, like 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 she mm -hmm. had a bunch of you know, like you know uh, Home Depot boxes on her. Like she just looks so. It just, stiff. Yeah, it depends on how the suits were bit, were made and stuff. Yeah, like that. so research comforts and stuff like that. But yeah. I always, but I thought it was dope with VR with the Beetleborgs because you guys were kids and you know, mm -hmm. and then y'all also had y'all White Ranger moment too. You know, for a hot oh, yeah. you know that yeah. was dope. Um, but yeah, it, the, how, what was like? Do you have any fun stories that you can give that you had from that time, like you know, being a kid? Well, I do have like one that? of that of that white blaster uh, beetleboard um, uniform. So, uh, one of the stuntmen, <clears throat> his name is Lee Whitaker. Mm -hmm. uh, he was always in the girl in Joe's um, uh, suits, which was okay. the red and purple. He would also sometimes be in uh, the um, the werewolf, but that was that was Frank Adelia most of the time. But with Lee, he also got in that white suit once, and we were I remember we were shooting, and it was really hot. And it's because his suit, whatever was under it, the leotard or whatever you call it, unitard, um, it wasn't it wasn't letting him breathe. So he just had oh. just just gallons of water that had built up, you know, from from him um, sweating. Right. He was feeling really hot, and he was getting dehydrated. And all I remember is him asking for coffee, hot yeah. coffee. He drank a hot coffee. And then it was just one point where everybody's standing around him and he just Ooh. fell over <laughs> in the suit. <laughs> Poor guy. Yeah, it was, it was wild. And I think it was just very difficult to put on, take off. So he wasn't trying to like, you know. Well, it's very old it school. Enough. It's like, they, cause it's like, they really didn't change much from like when they used to do like the Godzilla suits and stuff. And mm -hmm. you know, the guys who did the Godzilla stuff that was like losing 10, 20 pounds every time they shot. They make them. They make them breathable. They make them breathable yeah. now. You know, now yeah, yeah, it's a lot more easier. Rubber. 
it's I, okay. I, I love that. It's a lot more easy. It helps the, the actors, the stunt work a lot better. Um, did you ever get to put the helmet on by any chance? Like, I put the whole suit on, yeah. I had so I can't find it. I can't find it, but there's there's some if you look up if you look up my name right. online, you'll see there was a point where I was wearing the actual suit. I was the only kid out of the kids that was big enough. I was bigger than I was taller than some of yeah, them. Yeah, you were. Yeah, you were. Yeah. So I was able to wear that suit and they made a whole half day out of it. We did a photo shoot. I was, you know, standing there wow. with I was in the fiberglass suit. I felt so cool, man. It was it was really awesome. Um, and we took some really really cool shots, but I don't know where those went. I've been looking for the photographer anywhere. So if you're out there, bud, I don't even remember your name. If you still have some of those um those negatives, I'd love to you know get them That'd get them dope. printed. That would be dope, but, man. Uh, yeah, I did get to wear it once. I got to wear it once. It was fun. Um, the uh, flabber and the rest of the whole the whole you know bunch uh at first i didn't care for the guys i thought it was just gonna be a one-off like two-part episode to get mm -hmm. them just powers and that right but then you, you guys went back to the house and they right. just became part of the show right and i didn't know i was gonna like them as much as i did and it wasn't like a bulk and skull type of thing it was just like totally different from bulk and skull right. but it was like these guys could have their own show by themselves if they wanted to. right Right. And, it was, and yeah, Billy always con he constantly talked about that. He's like, "Why are you guys the main characters? I'm the one doing all the work." And it's like, the yeah. show was built like this. Saban bought the footage from Japan. Got to make a story happen with us fighting. Yeah. Then you have the kids, the actors. So you have to have another side where the kids are having their life, and with who who better than a bunch of, you know, uh, uh, monsters in a haunted mansion, mm -hmm. and this wacky, you know, phasm uh, genie guy. And so <laughs> that's typically what what happened, but. You know, um, yes, there could have, I, they talked about it many times, you know, just a house monster show, you know, because they were funny. Yeah. You know, working with, with, with Billy was, he was like a Robin Williams. I mean, he would constantly be working on changing his voice. And I mean, that man, nobody really worked harder than that man. He yeah. went and make up for four hours every morning. He would be there at four in the morning getting his makeup put on. And then the, 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 um, the, the makeup, what is it? The, um, the chin, what's the, the the, the whatever the name of the stuff is it ugh, I'm, uh, prosthetics yes what they put on his face it was eating away at his skin so they were trying different different um solutions wow. and remedies to, you know because yeah this was like maybe after first season you know so there was a lot of dedication on his end one of my favorite of the house monsters to work with was uh was joe hackett i mean this guy his voice is loud and it's broad and it's yeah but when you hear him in person he's powerful and he's funny though because he's sitting here saying these these hilarious lines, and you all you when you're on the other side of the camera, you're looking at 200 plus. There's 200 people minimum on the other side of that camera at any right. given time. With the gun. It doesn't even matter if it's a a uh, what is it uh, <laughs> a cam b cam doesn't matter. Right. And so you're trying to keep this roar of laughter from happening. And with him, no matter how silly it is, when you're there in person and you hear how he said, ah, ah, it's just it's just every noise or sound he makes, you just want to crack up. And he was the coolest man. He was he was very entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> That's also like I, I they really did make the show honestly like like it really helped a lot with them being on that show. The and kids, also, yes, you know, kids show. Yeah, you know, definitely. Um, uh, the the uh, what was I going to say? How was it to like when? What is it to like with the what is it what I'm trying to say the transition from being on a beat back to the to real world you know going back to school like did how was it with the one you were a beat so you, you as a superhero going to mm -hmm. school how was it with the girls I you know like the ladies how was it with just like school period you, you know I was I was pretty shy you know? yeah okay um so I you know I I definitely got bugged a lot. I mean, the show was still a hit. Even after we were done filming, I did go to a regular high school between ninth and 10th grade. Mm -hmm. um, didn't really fit in too well, only because all of junior high, you know, for me would be seventh, eighth. I guess nowadays it's sixth, seventh, eighth. Seventh, yeah. eighth, I spent that entire time with the exception of two weeks in the beginning of seventh grade. I, was, I went to a school, uh, uh, you know, middle school, which was terrifying. It was public school too. And I was like, oh man, I don't know. Mm. And then boom, I get on this show. And yeah, so I wasn't used to it, but. I do remember there being a Carl's Jr. at the end. I went to Valencia High School, so there, I don't know if it's still there, but there was a Carl's Jr. at the, at the bottom of the block uh, walking from the school. And um, after school, man, it was just, I got bombarded. I mean, it was almost, it was at school too. You know, there was what, 3,000 kids there at the time. 
Carl's Jr. had Beetleborg toys at one point. So then I had a line of, you know, kids, you know, getting my autograph for that. I remember that. But the show kept going. So it was like all the way out of high school. It was pretty crazy. But um, I wasn't in regular high school for very long. I went to a um, an independent study school. So that is where I started my business because mm -hmm. I, you know, school, you only legally need three hours a day uh, to do school. And then there wasn't a whole lot of homework. I mean, PE for me was bowling. Um, history for me was music history. That was pretty fun, but it was a joke. Um, <laughs> and so, you know, I was like, you know what? Okay, it looks like I'm ready. It looks like I got all the schooling I need, which was my yeah. parents. You know, so I started up my little car wash business back then when I was like 13. In between seasons. Get out of here. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So I had about, I never forget, I had about 63 regular customers. They didn't Santa Clarita. I was, at the time, by the time I turned 14, people were just giving me the keys to their car saying, hey, yeah, you want to just go ahead and wash it at your house? Wash it at your house, bring it back. My parents would be upset because the driveway was black from all the brake dust, you know, that, that went down in the white driveway. <laughs> it was the only black driveway on a street with full of white driveways. That's funny. But, uh, yeah, man, those were the days. Those were the man, days. Man, you've, <laughs> you've been an entrepreneur for a while. I love that. That is dope, bro. Um, yeah, dang. I can't Why even think, something? what was I doing at 14? Jeez. Oh, Watching me on TV. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> no, <probably not. laughs> that's true. You, you I, were in yeah. cool phase by then, brother. You were probably playing basketball on the courts. Or Man, something. I, you know what? I was, <laughs> I was, I was adamant about my shows. So like, it's like I would rush to get, make sure I got home. So it could be like I watch, I would be like watch Power Rangers, Beetleborgs come right after, the Young Hercules. And then after Young Hercules is over, I was like, all right, I go back outside now. I'll, let me see what everybody's doing. You know, right. like everybody knew not to mess with me, like from like at least to like four thirty, five o'clock, and then I right. go outside. <laughs> <laughs> then you go outside. Yeah, these yeah, kids don't even go outside you know, anymore. They're, they're exactly. stuck on PS Five and on their phones, and <laughs> I'm looking over here. I got a I got a sixteen year old over here. She's what are you doing right now? What are you doing? Watching she's watching YouTube. That's what she's doing. When you I was know, sixteen, bro. I was on my bicycle. I had a little trailer on the back, a little a little crate. Now, not on a rainy day, not on a rainy. Today it's raining outside. No. On, on a sunny day, yeah, I'd be outside, man, riding my bike. Oh, or no, the best to ride your bike with your friends. You get together, man. you get a group of y'all. Oh. Have you ever ridden a longboard? A longboard? <laughs> you have. Have you ridden one? Okay, so I, I, I used to turn my longboard into like a luge. I oh put a launch, I put a chair on there. I had a yeah. leather jacket that I got from Bloomingdale's or what's that place called? <laughs> Burlington Coat Factory. My, Burlington, mom yeah. me. my 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 lug boots. And I would just be ready and I would be going I'd be going down these hills in my neighborhood on this longboard with a, a, a beach chair attached to it at like oh. fifty miles an hour. You know, these kids yeah. aren't doing stuff like that. Now of course that was no. crazy, right? They're that was dangerous on an iPhone, but yeah. Still we, it was real adventure, man. It was fun. It you know, chances. hands on. You took chances yeah. like, when you were young. Now people just, they'll just record somebody else's doing it or just watch YouTube. Right. Uh, uh, yeah, everybody's <laughs> watching it. They're getting plenty of that that entertainment out of just watching it on Instagram or something. It just, yeah. It's like before it was just, you only saw that. We didn't have that. We had Jackass. You know, oh, right, 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 right. Yeah. They did that for us, you know, and we, yeah. might, might, we might imitate it. That was about it. Right. Um, <laughs> depending on how far it how. <laughs> Don't try this at home, kids. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Oh mm -hmm. my gosh, man! Thank you. I didn't want to take up too much of your time, man. No I, worries, man. I, I truly appreciate you coming on the show, man. Um, of course, brother. This is this is. Hopefully, a, we got all through all the questions. If not, you don't have time. We can always we can always. Oh man, we good, bro. Fun, I mean, fun talk to you, man. It was definitely great. Oh, by any chance, uh, is there any cons you're gonna be doing anytime? Because I know you. Any what? Uh, conventions anytime soon? Like anything you know, anything for next year or? No, I haven't really done anything since 2012. Um, but um, we'll, we'll we'll figure something out. We'll set some. Maybe maybe you and some of these other you know the interviewers you guys set something up. Let me know. I'll I mean, too. there is Ranger Station that happens in Philly. So okay, uh, I Philly, that's I, cool. I can knock out two birds with one stone. My dad, you know, you know, I mean, so my, my uncle's out there. I go visit him and I can do some autographs out there. Why not? Yeah, that's my homegirl uh, uh, Jamila. She she runs that. You know, so okay, it's been been real fun right now for the past few years that she's been doing it. So. Definitely have to like talk to her, link y'all up to figure okay. that out. <laughs> Sounds good, man. You have yeah, any other? Uh, you have any other cast members from the show that you're going to be interviewing? I, you know what? I'm, 
I don't know who to. Uh, I think I tried to. I tried to communicate with. Uh, uh, what is what's his name? The uh, the blue beetleboard. Wesley. Uh, Wesley. Uh, okay. I sent him a message. Try to get contact with him. Um, I have his phone but, number. I'll reach out to him and see if he will, he'll do it. Oh, that'd be I mean, great. Yeah, to do it. You know, a lot of a lot of you know a lot of the cast members. You know, they just uh, they kind of went on to do their own thing. I'm, I'm yeah. somewhat involved still. Um, but yeah, just just without saying too much, you know, they've they've got families now. This that the other. Yeah, I mean, that. they were a little bit younger ones. than me. They didn't really take it. You know, they didn't really continue their acting careers and stuff like that. I mean, I, neither did I. But um, yeah, right. they just it's difficult. It's difficult. You know. Yeah, I get but, it. I mean, especially with um, like our I think uh, Michael Michael Gatto, who played Young mm -hmm. Tommy. He was originally mm -hmm. supposed to be on Beetleborg. Himself, oh, really? Too, but. I think that's the clip I saw. I think that's the clip I saw of him. Yeah. Um, the whole thing where he was, was he originally chosen to be on the show or something? Yeah, he was originally supposed to be, because he was like, people liked him and stuff. And But they, it was like the same thing with the actual Tommy. It's like, well, we can't bring him over to this show because everybody really knows him as this. So we right. keep him over here. So that's what happened. Yeah. Uh, but he's a, he was a really dope guy. Um, really, um, really, really chill guy. And um, he, cool. I met him up in Ranger Station as well. So, um, right on. Yeah, I'll try man. to get in touch with some of them for you, okay? Yeah, man, I appreciate it, man. And thank get you once board. again. A little nostalgia. Let's go. <laughs> yes. Um, and happy holidays. And, and, happy and holidays. Happy, you know, to you, your family, and everything. And, you know, many blessings to come. Um, and break, thank you so much for doing the show, man. Thank you. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, uh, the last you thing I'd like to say is, because I, I have a lot of followers on, on the gram that are, that are fans. I know I don't really post a lot of Beetleborg stuff. Where can they find you too, as well? I'm sorry. Where can they find you as well, like for the fans? That's my first, my first last name and Junior Herbie Bias Junior on Instagram. But um, I know I don't post a lot, as you know, there's just not a lot of stuff these days. But um, if you have any guys have any ideas of what you want, I do have a box full. I should start posting some of the stuff. I have a box full of stuff from the set. Um, a lot of the stuff I lost in storage once, mm. um, had a lot of cool stuff, like props from the show, all kinds of stuff that I would love to be showing these days. But yeah, you, you know, they probably ended up on eBay a long time ago. And, um, <laughs> but I do have some really cool stuff that probably nobody has. That I'll, I'll That'd be dope to see. That'd be yeah. really dope to see, you know. For sure. Those are great memories we'll to have. And... We'll see if my toys are in better shape than yours or not. Man. You know, <laughs> hey, I try to I try to keep everything as clean as, as you know as good it's as tough. much as I can. You when know, you're a kid man. You know what? You know what I'm gonna do? Actually, I have almost all 88 episodes of the VH of, of the show on VHS. Wow. I think I'll probably do some kind of giveaway, man, because I some of them I would let friends borrow. I never got them back. So maybe for Ooh. the ones that I have left, like these were given to us at the end of the show. Yeah, uh, they have the Saban label on them. Everything. These are directly recorded from production, and they were given to us. Uh, yeah, on the last yeah, day yeah. that we were uh, we we shot, and um, so yeah, maybe I'll uh, start you know doing something with those to give those out. Hey, you know, we'll those are those are real good finds now too. The v VHSs yeah. right now they start to be a thing right now. So yeah, that, right on. So They're coming back. They're making a comeback. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> People are like, uh, no, they're not. <laughs> no, they're not. <laughs> they, they will. They will. Let me just tell you something. They, if I'm, internet goes away, you're going to have to go back to that stuff. So keep some of it. You can't put everything on Blu-ray and DVD. That's how I feel. You know, that's I still get some of my VHSs. I still do. You, yeah. You lose electricity. At least you got a generator. You know, pop pop out that old VCR yeah. that old tube and put it on the TV. <laughs> exactly. It's resistant. You know, that's all. You know, we don't got to do so much. Oh my gosh, oh, this has been just been awesome, man. Uh, thank awesome, you man. so much, man. I'm gonna close this show out. Uh, Miss Miss Herbie Baez Jr. Everybody, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, the saying is, you know, she's uh, uh, like, I always forget my own saying, like, because I'm just okay. so flabbergasted. But <laughs> this is the Bear Night Podcast. Don't don't forget to bear it all and be yourself. This is the Bear Night Podcast. I got Mr. Herbie Baez Jr. And we out. Peace. See you guys. See you guys. Bye. <laughs>